My name is Mitch Jackson and I would like to welcome you to TrialLawyerExpert.tv. A jury trial is not about you and it's not about your client. It's all about the jury and it's all about how you make them feel about your client's case. Develop rapport and capture their interest and attention and you're 95% along your way to a successful outcome. The problem as I see it is that most lawyers simply don't know how to reach out and they don't know how to grab the jury's attention. Instead of wanting more as the trial progresses, jurors and feel they feel trapped in the jury box while being strangled by indifference and boredom. It's not fun to watch and I can only imagine that from a client's perspective it's not fun to experience. How many times have you heard trial counsel during voir dire or opening explain the facts to the jury in a fashion similar to this. On December 1st, 2010, the plaintiff was driving home from work. He was traveling eastbound on Main Road at the approximate posted speed limit of 45 miles per hour. As he entered the intersection with a green light, his vehicle was struck by the defendant who was traveling northbound on Vine and who had run the red light. My client's vehicle was struck 16 feet past the crosswalk and 35 feet north of the corner of Main and Vine. The defendant's negligence was a proximate cause of my client's injuries and damages. Have you ever talked like this during voir dire, opening, or in your closing argument? I know I have. I know I did in my first trial. I thought that was the way my client's story uh, was supposed to be shared with the jury. Now looking back 26 years later, you know, boy did I have it wrong. When you need to share a brief overview of the facts to your jury to help set a foundation for your opening or for your voir dire, or even argue the facts during your closing argument, there's a much better approach that I learned from my friend and 1999 world champion of public speaking Craig Valentine. In this example, I use just one of the many techniques found in Craig's home study course entitled The Edge of Their Seat Storytelling Home Study Course for Speakers. Now, for best results, I would normally walk away from the lectern and build anchor spots in front of the jury. I might also use photos or a PowerPoint to help complement my story, but for purposes of this video, I'm simply going to share the verbal story with you and save these complementary techniques possibly for another video in the future. If you were standing on the corner just about a half mile down the street from here at Main and Vine, you'd see Bob Johnson driving by down Main Street after a long day of work. Almost at the same time, you hear the engine of the defendant's Pontiac GTO get louder and louder from your left. It's approaching the intersection quickly. The light's red and it doesn't appear to you that the GTO is slowing down. You glance back at Bob and you see him pass directly in front of you. The next thing you hear is Bob's horn and his tires screeching across the asphalt. You hear and see the collision. You watch Bob's car flip twice and then upside down with its wheels spinning. The smell of burning tires and gasoline fill the air. As you run towards Bob, you hear someone in pain screaming for help. The same fact pattern, but a bit more engaging, wouldn't you agree? As long as your story is supported by the facts, who says you can't share uh, the details of your story, the details of your client's case in a meaningful fashion. Now using the same type of techniques Craig uses to invite and engage his audience, and by the way, there's a link below this video if you're interested in getting Craig's course, trial lawyers can also use the same approach to engage their jurors during the voir dire opening and during their closing arguments. It's all about inviting your jury to experience the case with you and your client. Craig calls this tap and transport. It's his tap and transport technique.
You see, by tapping the jury, you're getting them to think about their world first. By doing so, they'll become interested in what you're talking about and will start to relate to what your client's story is all about. Once you've captured their attention, you then transport or bring them into your client's story so they can more easily relate to what's happened to your client and appreciate how they can help make things right. So, what's the best way to go about doing this? Well, first, you have to remember to use the word you when talking to your jury. During voir dire, engage your jury by asking, have you ever been injured? How did that make you feel? Have you ever been in a car crash? Has something ever happened to you that prevented you from going to work and enjoying your family and your life? Because a good story is more effective if, if told as though it's happening right now, you need to use good transitional comments to, to take your jury back in time to the scene of the incident like I did in my example. For example, if you were sitting next to Bob, you would see. Or another method might be, you should have been with Bob when, and then you explain the facts. Or, come with us back to Maine and Vine. One of my favorites, imagine standing on the street just half a mile from here. And here's one I used in a recent trial. Take my hand and let's take a walk down Main Street. Using this approach, you can tap and transport your juror back in time so they can see, hear, and smell Bob's story. Now here's an important point to remember. Different jurors will absorb information in different ways. One will listen to what you're saying. Another might watch you tell the story and in their mind uh, imagine what the people look like, what the incident or collision site looked like and others will use their imagination and, and their sense of smell and taste to interpret and digest information. Many will use a combination of one or more of these variables. So you have to make sure that when you tell your story, you use and touch upon each of these things. In the above example, you could see and hear Bob in the GTO. You watched Bob drive by and and then you saw Bob's car flip twice after the collision with its wheels spinning. You could smell the burning tires. And you could smell the gasoline. Now, remember that you're not writing a novel. You're having a brief conversation with your jury, so keep things short and sweet and within the rules of evidence. Now, note that you're not arguing during your voir dire or your opening. You're simply stating facts in a much more interesting fashion. And there's nothing wrong with that. Rarely do I ever hear an objection from opposing counsel when I use this technique. And when I do, I can actually tell that the jury is not happy with opposing counsel interrupting my story. Now, you don't need to share all the details at this point in the trial. Your jury will be able to figure it out and they'll be able to fill in the important details. Notice that in my example, we didn't talk about the speed of the vehicles, compass directions of the streets, or measurements or point of impact of the cars measured in feet. This information will all eventually come out during the trial. You don't need to do this when you're tapping and transporting. Right now, you're simply uh, you know, using this technique to connect with your jury to tell your client's story so that the jury is genuinely interested in what you have to say and what you will show them during the trial process. So, what did we cover in today's video? Well, we learned that to capture and keep the attention of your jury, you need to keep things interesting. You need to invite them into your story by first tapping and then transporting them into your story so that so that you can get the jury to internalize and to feel strongly about your client's case and your client's story. You learned how to incorporate elements such as sight, sound, touch, and smell into your story. Now, keep in mind that to be effective with this technique, you must be very subtle with using it. Uh, I would recommend that you practice this technique 
by recording yourself sharing your story and let other people listen to it. Listen to their feedback, listen to their criticism, listen to how you sound, and then continue to fine tune your story so that it, uh, so it gives you the best impact for the time spent telling your story to the jury. Well, that's about it for today's video. If you have a couple of minutes and you'd like to stay in touch, then by all means, I invite you to join me on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Google Plus using the links found at this website. Please keep in mind that if you like these trial uh, video tips, then make sure to share them with other trial lawyers who you think might benefit from these tips. I always look forward to your feedback. I always look forward to your comments or questions. So feel free to contact me using the contact information found at this website. Also make sure to subscribe to the RSS blog feed so that when a new video is posted, if you use the email option, you'll have a little note placed in your email inbox just letting you know that there's been a new video posted at the blog. This, time, this way, you don't have to keep coming back to see whether or not a video has been posted on any particular day. I'm going to do my best to try to post a new video each Monday, so always make sure that if you're not using email or RSSS blog feeds, just check back to the, uh, the blog each week and, and hopefully benefit uh, from the videos that we're posting. That's about it. I hope you found this video useful. I'm looking forward to your feedback. Hope you have a fantastic day. And remember to always make today your masterpiece.